Hi everyone, Dr. Mike here. Let's look at the way we divide the nervous system. So we actually divide the nervous system anatomically and physiologically into what we call the central nervous system, that's our brain and spinal cord, and the peripheral nervous system, which is all the nerves that shoot out and away and also come back in to the brain and spinal cord as well. Now, a couple of important points is this. I've got the brain and spinal cord here, and you can see that it is the central nervous system anatomically sits right in the middle, but also the central nervous system physiologically because this is where we integrate information and make sense of it. All our decision processing happens in the brain and spinal cord. So it's the central nervous system anatomically and physiologically. Then you can see when we talk about the peripheral nervous system, like I said, all the nerves that come out and away and come back in to both the brain, brainstem and spinal cord. Now if we look at all the nerves that come out and away from the brain, and brain stem, they're called our cranial nerves, and we have 12 pairs of cranial nerves. I've actually done a video on the names of these 12 pairs of cranial nerves, but I'll do more videos in the future. Then we've got 31 pairs of spinal nerves, and they're gonna be coming out and away from the spinal cord. Remember, you've got the cervical, thoracic, lumbar, sacral, coccygeal areas of the spinal cord. And I'll do a whole video on the spinal cord as well. So let's divide this peripheral nervous system into its functional component. So, We've got our central nervous system here comprised of the cerebral hemispheres. So they're the two halves of the brain that you see. The diencephalon, the cerebellum, cerebellum means small brain. Diencephalon is referring to things like the thalamus and the hypothalamus, and I'll do whole videos on those. Brainstem, which is the midbrain, pons, and medulla. So midbrain, pons, medulla, and the spinal cord itself. All of these central nervous system, like I said, that's there for processing, making sense, creating decisions, okay? Now, like I said, things can go towards the central nervous system or out and away. So things that are going towards the central nervous system are going to be sensory information. So that means things that we wanna make sense of from the external environment or the internal environment. So it's gonna begin out here, the internal or external environment, something's happening, there's a change, there's a stimulus, and what that stimulus does is it's picked up by receptors. Some of these receptors could be more peripherally or cutaneously, or some of these receptors can be deep internally in organs, for example. Now, these receptors will then send this signal via nerves through ganglia. Now, what ganglia are? Ganglia are groups of nerve bodies, okay? So when you look at a neuron, a neuron's going to have a body of a neuron, and it's gonna have the axon and the dendrites, okay? So the body of that neuron, there's gonna be multiple bodies that sit within ganglia. That's what a ganglia is, a collection of cell bodies, okay? That sit outside, that sit outside of the central nervous system. So the signal's going up through the receptors, through the nerves and the ganglia, and then it gets to the spinal cord and then it goes up to the brainstem where we make sense. Different types of sensory information. Could be about touch, could be about pressure, could be about pain, could be about temperature, could be about a chemical stimulus. Many different types of receptors to send the signal up. Now when we look at motor output, we've got two major types. We've got that for visceral. So visceral motor outputs is referring to our organs. And we've got somatic motor outputs. This is soma means body. So it's basically saying it's about our body moving around. So one is gonna be unconscious, that's the visceral. The other is gonna be conscious, that's skeletal muscle. And so as this signal goes out, for the visceral, it's got three major types of outputs. It can be the sympathetic nervous system, that's fight or flight. So think about what happens when you get scared, pupils dilate, heart rate increases, airways open up, blood vessels start to get shunted away from the skin to the skeletal muscles, the deeper areas of our body. That's what happens here. Parasympathetic nervous system, rest and digest. You have lacrimation, salivation, your GIT starts to move around. And the enteric nervous system also has to do with the gut as well, stimulating the gut to release enzymes and various types of fluids and mucus and promoting gut motility. That sends a signal through ganglia and nerves again to, now when we're looking at the visceral portion of the peripheral nervous system, okay? Sympathetic, parasympathetic, enteric. What you're gonna find is it's gonna innovate or speak to very specific parts of the body. It's gonna be smooth muscles, because it's unconscious, right? Cardiac muscle, unconscious, and glands that release, what do glands release? They release hormones and different types of fluids, 
as well. Okay, then we've got the other somatic motor system. This is where we want to consciously move the body. If we consciously move the body, the ultimate output is going to be skeletal muscle. So skeletal muscle is the muscle that's attached to the bones and allows for leverage points, allows for our tongue to move, our diaphragm to contract and so forth. So these are the anatomical and functional divisions of the nervous system.